So Max, in this video I'm going to model, texture, rig, animate and even create a little illustration in the end. <laughs> in one video. Alright, let's create some Max. Start off by creating a cube, cut it in half and then add a mirror modifier to that one. Turn on clipping, so now our center line will stay in the middle. This will be the torso for our mech, yay! Now let's add a cylinder underneath, this will act as the rotation point for our torso. Then we'll duplicate the torso and this will become the pelvis and then you pretty much just start, you know, modeling. For now, just block out the big shapes. We'll do the details later. I recommend using Bevel. It makes everything just a little bit more sci-fi. And here we have the mech body. Next step, create a new cube, move it out to the side, then add a mirror modifier to that one as well, but set the mirror object target to the pelvis. This is the start of our leg. Duplicate it a couple of times, and then you have a full leg. Now give those legs some detail, like feet and beveling, you know legs. If you want to see everything a bit more clear, you can turn on the random colors in the shading properties. Also, add some cylinders to the leg joints. It makes you look like an engineer. And that's a full mech. Now let's combine everything into legs, pelvis, turret, and torso. Finito. Select everything. Shade smooth. Mesh properties and alt click auto smooth. Boom. Looking sharp. But I still want to add some more detail to my mech. And there's this awesome tool in Blender called Carver. You can find it by going to edit, preferences, add-ons, search for Carver, and enable it. Now hit Control shift x and you have access to all these amazing tools where you can carve into your model and really shape out, you know, panels and all kinds of things. You also have access to these Boolean meshes that you can insert into your model to create nice little details. Something I also like doing is creating little kit bashy parts that I can then scatter throughout my model afterwards. And it just looks awesome and adds a lot of detail very, very, very fast. You know, it, if it just looks good, it doesn't matter how you made it. Just keep doing it and also add things asymmetrically. It helps with the realism. For some reason, they always put things asymmetrically on military vehicles, so I don't know why. Yay! Looks great! But uh, just make sure to recombine everything so it's nice and simple. I also left some parts on the Mac mirrored and this will make it easier for texturing. Speaking of which... Let's add some texture. Switch to Material Preview. Add a sunlight. Open the Shader Editor. Create a new material on our torso. Into this, we're going to load a new image texture. And I found this picture of this old tank, and uh, you know, I just uh, like old tanks. Plug into the base color. And it, it's, 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 it's beautiful. Um, but let's apply beauty to everything. Uh, sh select your original object and then shift select everything else and then press Control L materials and now everything is beautiful. Uh. Well, all we gotta do now is jump over to the UV editing workspace and uh, press U, smart UV project and just start moving around the tiles to fit on the image. You know, find some areas that, you know, make your model look better, not worse. You know, look for cool parts. I found this line that looks great. I'll use that in my design, you know. And it looks great, uh, not up close, but uh, you know, from afar. We can also create some roughness maps based on the color maps here. We'll just grab a ramp, plug it in, and then we can just play around with the values. I'm gonna go for something a bit more rough, but then with little hints of shininess here and there, just to make it sparkle. And we can also add some extra detail by plugging the same thing into a displacement map. Boom. I also really like adding a hint of bright oranges or reds just to indicate some sort of warning interface, you know. And let's add a light. No, too evil. Definitely too evil. Definitely too evil. Ah, much better. And if you want to add a cool sci-fi camouflage to your mech, all you have to do is create a war noise noise, switch it from Euclidean to Chubby Chef, and then take Chubby Chef and plug it into a ramp and switch from linear to constant and then you just combine it with a mixed rgb and your base color and boom you have a cool awesome camouflage and our mech is ready for rigging add an armature to your scene snap it to the pelvis with the 3d cursor and make sure to set the bone to in front under the viewport display then line up the tip of the bone with the turret's origin extrude an extra bone upwards and this will now be the bone for our turret now using the 3d cursor and snapping into the joint cylinders we created before extrude from the pelvis a hip bone so it lines up in the middle of them and do this for each joint you could eyeball it but making it dead center just helps the look a little bit and there we have the hip joints then all you gotta do now is extrude the bones for each leg part, once again lining it up with those joint cylinders. And I like adding a bone for the foot and the toes, just to get some extra flexibility. And now would be a great time to name everything properly. I use the naming convention that Blender likes, the L is important here. Now we can jump into pose mode and we can start rotating our legs here, but we want a bit more controls. So for that we're gonna create an IK setup. We're gonna come to the ankle here and extrude out a bone. Press Alt P on that one and clear the parent so that it's loose. Then we'll create an additional bone, move it out here in front of the knee, and this will be our pole target. Name the bones leg IK and leg PT, then we will select the shin bone, open the bone constraints and add an inverse kinematics constraint. 
And for the target, we'll select our armature and select the IK bone on the list. And we will do the same for our pole target. And your leg looks awful. <laughs> nice. And that's because we're going to adjust some settings and orientations to make everything look uh, not horrible. So we'll have to do that. We'll jump back into edit mode, select everything. Then we'll go to armature, bone roll, recalculate bone roll. Then we'll set it to global plus set axis. And this has aligned all the bones correctly. To see that better, you can check the viewport display on your armature. So now we can jump back into pose mode. And now we just have to adjust the chain length. We'll set it to three because we have three joints in our legs. And if your leg is still rotated, then you just come up to the pole angle and you adjust it up to 90 degrees. Awesome. So now you can grab your handle and you can see that our leg works like an RK leg and we can use this to direct the knee. Once we've done that, we can through the power of automation, select our leg bones, go to armature, symmetrize and boom it has mirrored our legs and it even renamed the legs with an r at the end neat all right and all we gotta do now is do some basic skinning so we'll select all of our robot here and then shift click our armature press ctrl p and select armature deform with empty groups and now blender has created these awesome vertex groups on each object that corresponds to the different bones and then we can just select the mesh parts that we want to attach to our bones find the corresponding bone and assign and then we can move our leg around and it follows yay and because we have a mirror modifier on our legs it also works on the other leg automatically modifiers yeah and then all we gotta do now is select the rest of the mesh parts and assign them to the right bone vertex groups you know the drill and if you have objects that don't need to be mirrored then apply that mirror modifier and he's done you know he's moving he's alive he he can he can do things and look oh look at him with the textures and the movement and he can dance and look at that walk oh, he looks just that's it, that's, oh, that makes me happy. You probably saw the title and thought, where is the animation? But you can't learn animation in one minute. Screw that, let's do it. Bring up the timeline and turn on the auto keying option. This will make it so that every time you make a movement, it'll save it as animation. I'm gonna create a run cycle and my suggestion would be to break down everything into key poses and then granularly move your way inwards and use a nice reference like this one to see how run cycles work. I think it's really important to think about the weight of your pose. So make sure you're not just posing from the sides, but also from the different angles. And here comes a really awesome feature. You can just select everything, press Ctrl C, and then go to a new frame. And then you can paste the inverse of that position by pressing Ctrl Shift V. And now you've posted the inverse, and now you have a full step. And now we just gotta do the in-betweens. And here I really wanna create a snappiness in the movement. And to do that, I'm just going to make sure that the pose right before the key pose is a little bit closer to that key pose in look. And then you can just go to the first frame here, select everything in the timeline, press Ctrl C, go to the last frame, press Ctrl Shift V. And now you have a fully looped animation. We can dial our timeline in to 16 and then we can watch our guy walk. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't matter if you have parts flying you can always just you know come in and fix those just go into the armature and set it to rest position and then now you can reassign everything and there he is just running in the sun and i might as well build a little scene for him and duplicate some friends for him to you know hang out with and uh here i can just grab different points of the animation and then i get different poses and all this dynamicness from just one piece of animation that's uh, amazing and then some clouds there and some rocks there and green fields and and there we have it ah, they look so happy together oh my god they're back and i know too much